I am missing my kids so much. One of my kids, oh, I nearly cried the other day. He put in the chat, he was like, I'm so sad, I just want to be at school. And I was like, Jack, it's okay, like, I feel the same. I just miss being able to walk around and just be like, oh, hi, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> how was Christmas? Like, I want to know about people's Christmases. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. I think there's nothing sadder than an empty school. Like, it just feels horrible, really, because you're just walking around and normally it's such a vibrant place. Even the staff, there's not all the staff in, there's no one to talk to. Like, I've been hanging out by the coffee machine just on the hope <laughs> that I catch someone <laughs> walking past. So it's actually been quite lonely. Everyone's doing what they can, but obviously it's not the same. Thank you. Did you wipe it down? Yep. Well the difference in staff confidence, I think, now from when we went back in March 2020, if you walk around the school now, there's people delivering live lessons and zooming in and using visualisers and, you know, recording stuff, and, and it's great, and the, the kids have responded really well to it. So the, the level of confidence with IT generally, but also with staff confidence of delivering to a screen, which is not easy to do, it's been dramatic, I think. We were also developing a greater understanding of how big the digital divide was. All of a sudden you'll have lots of children in a household that are sharing one device or they're having to access IT from their phones. You know, we take it for granted particularly that we accept everyone to have broadband and Wi-Fi and a lot of them don't. It's just the data from their phones that they, that they are using. What we found since this lockdown, when there is five hours of you, your internet needs to be good, you need to have a device to be able to access your learning. The requests for devices is, is shown that there is a much greater divide. Today we're going to drop off some laptops which have been donated by the High Sheriff of Bedford that we're gifting to some of our students just to enable them to complete all of their work at home really. I think if you've got your computers and you've got everything at home and you're all set up for these things I imagine it's a lot easier. I mean I don't think it's easy on anyone whatever background you come from but at the same time lack of money, lack of housing, lack of employment is all going to impact this area does suffer more so than other areas for things like that. For some families and for a lot of people right now it is so tough and whether it's dropping off the food packages, supporting with online learning laptops, internet, so getting dongles and uh, Wi-Fi packs out to families, I think it's so important that as a school and I think we've really recognised that and I know lots of schools have up and down the country and are doing an amazing job with it go around loads of people's houses doing drop-offs, so we thought we'd pop in and then you can crack on with your way. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to pop it down here and then you can grab it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> I find it very difficult to get online. Earlier I couldn't get on and it was making me very, very mad. I've been on my phone, but it just kicks me out on Teams every single time, so I just memorise it then, just write it all down. So hopefully you'll find it easier. See you later, Ellie. Well, first of all, it's nice to see you. It's good to see you. A while. How are you getting on? All right. Just all right? Yeah. I do miss some of the teachers. Like, I do miss you a little bit. <laughs> I'm surprised you admitted that. So you've been working from your phone? Yeah. And then do you like write your notes on paper then? Yeah, some of them. How do you find that? Because I feel like that would be quite difficult. Work it's working long. Yeah. And like, do you, can you do, um, like, you know, when you join a Teams meeting, can you put your camera on and stuff just like normal? No, some of them tell you to take it, some of them, some teachers tell you to keep it on, some of them, yeah. So how much easier would it be if you had a laptop instead of using your phone? 100%. Like, 100%. Yeah. When they come back, there's going to be maybe more withdrawn kids, kids that just kind of can't keep up in the same way and it's going to take them a little bit of extra support to get them back to where they were. The kids have been put in a really unfortunate position 
And whether you want to dress it up as this is just what every child's dealing with or not, it's not what every child's dealing with. Although it's really easy to focus on how bad these impacts are going to be, I think what we really need to be focusing on is how we're going to mitigate these going forward. I think it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of extra effort to try and get our school community and obviously the wider community as a whole back on track. The thing that people keep talking about is the gaps obviously in the learning and what if you said to me what you know what's what plugs those gaps well it's good quality teaching good quality teaching will surpass anything else any type of intervention you put in place if you put children in classrooms with good quality teachers and they're interested engaged boom you're, you're there you, you're gonna the kids are gonna do that you know it's, it's not it's not rocket science obviously but we've had very very mixed a mixed bag of that because we've had students that have been in been isolating been back in been isolating whole year groups that haven't potentially been affected um, but then maybe the staff have. The mental health and the financial situations of, of a lot of families that previously we wouldn't have been concerned about actually are starting to, to come to the surface. You know, we've got 40% approximately pupil premium. You know, what's that going to be like in a year's time? You know, and, and, and it'll be between now and then actually how that develops and which families we support. We feel that school staff should now be vaccinated. And I'm not talking about teachers and senior leaders, I'm talking about <laughs> our canteen staff and our cleaners and anyone who's in the people that come into our workplace to work with the young people, and whether they be from external agencies, every single person that has contact and is working on the front line needs to be vaccinated. There's a, there's a threat to people and people are putting their lives at risk by coming to work and we need to respect that. There's going to be huge challenges ahead of us. The stress and the worry for parents and the anxiety that we've, we've seen and the heartache and the loss and the you know, loss, lack of money and lack of food and lack of everything else that's gone on, lack of social interaction, I think that's hugely important for young people and for, and for adults. I think we'll all look back on this and think, crikey, what part did I play? And I, I, I will put my hand on my heart and say that, you know, I think we, we've played a really important part as a school. And yes, I'm the head teacher of the school, but it's not, it's not my journey, it's everyone else's. It's, it's how we've all contributed together and how we've all work together to try and get the best outcomes for the students. We're certainly trying to bring everyone together and hopefully that we'll see better days soon. That's the, that's the main thing, isn't it?